For centuries, Tibet was cut off from the outside world by its remote location, extreme climate and geographic environment. This far-flung region thwarted all but the boldest travelers and explorers that is, until the construction of the Qinghai-Tibet Railway in 2006, which connected Tibet to the rest of China. The Qinghai-Tibet Railway holds the record for the world's highest train route, reaching altitudes over 5,000 m. The railway line, which cost 4.2 billion US dollars to build, is an extraordinary feat of modern engineering. Sometimes hailed as the Sky Road, the railway traverses a region known for earthquakes, low temperatures and low atmospheric pressure. As 960 kilometers of the line sits at 4000 m, the designers and engineers had to tackle three main challenges during construction, the fragile ecosystem, the lack of oxygen and permafrost. To provide proper aid for the construction workers, the government built dozens of medical facilities and oxygen-making stations along the way to alleviate the effects of altitude sickness. The route was also carefully chosen to avoid destruction of vegetation and the natural habitations of wild animals, and they tried to ensure stability in permafrost regions by installing gravel embankments. But you know what? Another Sichuan Tibet railway with a total investment of more than 300 billion yuan is under construction here. Many people are puzzled by this. Since there is already a Qinghai Tibet railway, why spend a lot of money to build a second railway to Tibet? In addition, the process of building the Qinghai Tibet railway was too arduous, and many people paid the price of their lives for it, so why must China open a second railroad into Tibet? Today, let's talk about how the Sichuan Tibet Railway is planned. Let's get started. In 2011, at the National People's Congress, the issue of the research and construction of the Sichuan Tibet Railway was raised, and in 2013 the construction of the Chengpu Railway section started. From then on, the construction plan of the second Sky Road was officially launched. Due to the complex geological conditions along the railway, the Sichuan Tibet Railway is divided into three sections, namely the section from Chengdu to Yin, the section from Yin to Nyingki, and the section from Nyingki to Lhasa. At present, only the Yan Nyingki section is still under construction. It started construction in November 2020, and the new length can reach 1,011 kilometers. According to the plan, the total investment of the entire Sichuan Tibet Railway is about 319.8 billion yuan. Obviously, compared to the previous total investment of only 33 billion yuan of Qinghai Tibet Railway, this is really very expensive, or almost to about 10 times. Because of this, many people are skeptical about the construction of the Sichuan Tibet Railway, thinking that there is no need to build a second railway to Tibet. So, why does China have to build this road? Let's first look at the basic situation of Tibet. The total area of Tibet is 1,202,800 square kilometers, which accounts for about one-eighth of the total land area of the country. Because it is located in a plateau area, the resident population is only 3.66 million, which is a typical place with a large area and few people. Judging from the proportion of the population, it seems that a railway and a highway can already meet people's travel needs, but the rich resources contained in Tibet have long put forward higher requirements for transportation. And China also considered various needs before deciding to build a new Sichuan Tibet railway. The first is energy. Excellent transportation methods are necessary to transport the resources from this treasure land of Tibet. According to the data, there are many kinds of resources in Tibet, and the resource reserves are quite rich, such as mineral resources, land resources, water resources, forest resources, energy resources, and so on. In terms of mineral resources, there are as many as 101 types of minerals in Tibet, of which only 22 have been developed and utilized. This means that there are still a large number of mineral resources waiting for people to develop. Looking at energy again, we all know that a new energy revolution has quietly started around the world, and China is also actively preparing for energy transition, hoping to achieve carbon neutrality as soon as possible through the development of various new energy sources. In this case, the Tibet region may be the key. Today's popular new energy is mainly clean energy, including hydropower energy, geothermal energy, solar energy, wind energy, nuclear energy, and so on. 
Among these, except nuclear energy, all other energy sources can be found in Tibet. Taking water energy as an example, the water system in Tibet is very developed. After all, the Qinghai Tibet Plateau has always been known as the Asian Water Tower. Furthermore, due to the very large difference in terrain, the region is also extremely rich in hydropower resources, and its hydropower resource reserves are expected to reach 200 million kilowatts. It can be seen that the resources in the Tibet region are indeed too rich, and in order to develop these resources, it is necessary to make it easier to communicate with the outside world. Therefore, building the second railway to Tibet is undoubtedly the correct choice. At that time, China's energy layout will also undergo certain changes, and new clean energy will be the mainstay. Secondly, China wants to improve the transportation layout of the whole country. The transportation construction in China's western region has always been significantly behind. When the traffic routes in the developed central and southern regions spread like spider webs, the western region was still blank. Since the concept of the Belt and Road Initiative was put forward, it is very important for the transportation network in Tibet to become increasingly mature. The construction of the Sichuan Tibet Railway is conducive to promoting exchanges between China and most Eurasian countries and promoting their economic development in a better direction. Finally, to ensure national security, China must optimize transportation in Tibet. Although the world is generally relatively peaceful today, the situation is often changing rapidly. The strategic status of Tibet has always been very high. After all, it is located on the border of China, so if any dispute arises, China needs to have a large capacity vehicle to transport officers, soldiers and resources to Tibet to ensure that the border is in a safe state. In addition, the construction of the Sichuan Tibet Railway is also beneficial to the people in Tibetan areas and can effectively change the local closed state. When the Lhasa Inki section of the Sichuan Tibet Railway was not completed, there was no railway in southeastern Tibet. It was still very difficult for local people to travel, and it was also difficult for outsiders to travel. The completion of the Qinghai Tibet Railway has driven the development of tourism in Tibet and the strength of the Sichuan Tibet Railway cannot be underestimated. At least in terms of passenger transport capacity, it is quite high. Moreover, Tibet's tourists come from all over the world, and the proportion of inbound tourists is very high. I believe that after the Sichuan Tibet Railway is fully built and opened, the income of the tertiary industry in Tibet will usher in a new high. Statistics show that due to the opening of the Qinghai Tibet Railway in 2007, the number of inbound tourists and income from Tibet began to increase significantly, and the number of inbound tourists increased by 135% compared with the previous year. Generally speaking, when the Sichuan Tibet Railway is completed, China will be able to achieve rapid development in terms of energy, national defense and economy in the future. Because of this, China did not only focus on the huge investment in the early stage, but ignored the long-term benefits of the opening of the Sichuan Tibet Railway. After all, the benefits brought by it are more than a mere 300 billion yuan, right? Well, thanks for listening. If you have any suggestions, just leave them in the comments section. We'll come back as soon as possible and check them, and then we'll give feedback. See you next time.